Hey guys, welcome back to Lavendaire. My name's Eileen and today I'm so excited to kickstart a new series that I've been working on called Artist of Life. So in the series, I'm gonna be interviewing amazing people who are actively creating their dream life. They're actively creating a life that they love and they're honing their craft as an artist of life. So today we're so lucky to have the beautiful, very talented Karen Rosalie. Karen is a fashion and product photographer based in LA. She's known for her work as the photographer behind the Chriselle Factor. Chriselle Lim is one of the world's biggest fashion and beauty influencers. And Karen is the photographer behind all her gorgeous photos. She is a true artist. And honestly, she's one of the most inspiring people I know. So I'm so excited to have her here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm so stoked right now. Okay, so let's talk Talk about your journey because I want everyone to understand who you are. When and how did you decide you wanted to be a photographer? Actually, it's so funny because throughout my whole college experience, like I had no idea that I was going to be a photographer. So like I had friends who were like in the med school program and they're already like, what are you gonna do? And I was like, I don't know. But I um, I thought I was gonna be a painter actually until I was I went to UCLA to do the art program and in my sophomore year I think I did a photography class and that was when I like everything made sense because once I picked up the camera and started shooting, I was like, wow, like I really want to do this as a career. Like, and that was back when, like, a lot of photographers were putting their work up on blogs, and I was constantly looking at like amazing, beautiful work, and I was like, I want to do this. Really? Yeah. So, what kind of photography got you interested? Was it fashion first, or was it something else? It, like, I've always loved like the fashion photography imagery, but I don't think I've ever been bold enough to say like I wanted to do it. So, I did everything else before that. Before I was finding like fashion is like what, what I want to do. I did like weddings, um, okay. e-commerce and um, I even tried like school photography uh -huh. <laughs> yeah okay. um, until until like I, I met Crystal like three years ago and we were shooting um, editorials and that was when I was like wow I really actually do love this so can we go back to that journey and uh -huh. talk about like the hardest part of becoming a photographer did you meet any big challenges I mean, like all of it was hard. All of it was hard. <laughs> okay, but, but I think the hardest part was getting over the fear of like failure. I mean, that's like so cheesy, but like, yeah. but just like fear in general. I had a lot of fears going into it. Like, number one, can it be a sustainable career? Number two, how do I get started? Number three, like, is my work even good? Like, yeah. you know, it's just as so, an artist, you're exactly right. Yeah, yourself. there's just so much fear in it. Like, yeah. it's not just about failure, but like even like talking to like models and clients. Like, I would be scared to I was I was very shy so I would be really scared to like even uh, reach out to people to shoot so how did you overcome that fear uh, <laughs> you just it's one of those things that you just kind of have to do um, like for me I remember it was a decisive moment where I was like I just need to get over it. I need to. I need to push myself so I can get to this next level. So, um, what I ended up doing was, I used a measurement of if I was uncomfortable, then that was like a measure of like I should do this, right? Yeah. Like it's good because yeah. it's gonna push me to grow. Like I remember, like this is gonna sound so crazy, but like I canceled a shoot once because. I just couldn't, like, the idea of, like, talking to a model, like, really freaked me out. You were scared, so yeah. you canceled the shoot. I, yeah. Wow. That was, like, yeah. I was, like, I just came out of college, uh -huh. and um, I wanted to do fashion, and, you know, I, I had to shoot set up. I would actually do that. That was not the first time. That yeah. was, like, multiple times where I did that, and eventually I was just, like, I'm gonna, I have to go. Like You have to face your fears mm -hmm. and just do yeah. it. Yeah, and it was, I, like, yeah. the more you do it, the... The easier, the easier it, it gets. Yeah. No, I totally get it. Because yeah. with this shoot, I was so scared that I was afraid to ask you for the <laughs> longest <you> time. <laughs> I was scared because it's such a... I think it's because when you care about it, yeah. you're... I don't know, something keeps you from like right. doing yeah. it. Yeah, it's and not you're the whole perfection. And you want to run away and right. hide, yeah. but you just have to get over that fear and yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. So I want to ask you, how did you find your identity as an artist? I feel like you have such a strong sense of self. I feel like you have a strong sense of confidence in yourself now. So tell me, how did that develop exactly? I'm so glad to hear that because no, really. sometimes it doesn't feel like it. But um, to be honest, it's pretty recent. Um, I think I started experimenting and 
and putting my work out there as like artistry like maybe a year ago and I think it was just finally like I've always been interested in like more like abstract imagery and um, just different modes of like art making right like um, and like challenging myself to think outside of the box and creating work that I find like that I love but like I was never um, a lot of it was just identifying that this is what I like and then just going for it um, and then not being afraid again like yeah. to just say like hey this is me as an artist or this is me as whatever um, but this is my work and I hope you guys like it so yeah it's just a lot of it was just like trial and error and a lot of practice and then like so just now do you feel like you're really confident in yourself as an artist I think it's still a process, like I'm definitely like still learning like what it means to be an artist, right? But at the same time, like I think confidence comes from like first believing in yourself and like yeah. and then not worrying about yeah. what other people will think and stuff. Yeah, I want to talk about that. So like uh -huh. where was the breaking point between like you not believing in yourself and not being confident to you like now being like, I know what I'm doing? The biggest point I would say that I can remember so far is uh, New York Fashion Week. Um, because I was literally like thrown into the fire of like the craziness of New York Fashion Week. And at that point, like it was like as I was working with Prasam and Lara from their team, and they're such great role models in terms of like they really supported me and let me kind of be creative. So I think it was just like a matter of being at the shows and then doing my artsy shots at the shows and then and then looking at the final product and being like, wow, I can actually, like, I should believe in myself. I can like, take how, photos. Exactly, I yeah. Can <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so awesome. And then I think I've heard you talk about being at fashion shows before, how you're like the only girl uh -huh. of the photographers uh -huh. and you're like the shortest. And right, talk yeah. about that experience. Right, so I think a lot of like my confidence now comes from also just being different, right? Um, at the fashion show, like you're, I was literally like the only chick, the only Asian Why? chick. Why? Why? I don't know. I think That's a lot so of weird. photographers are also just like guys yeah. too, like older guys, yeah. and especially in that industry. Of why? They may because they have a lot of gear and they have to carry it. <laughs> Let's talk about the Karen Rosalie aesthetic. Okay. So can you describe that to our audience for people who've never seen your Instagram or blog? What What is it and where did it come from? I want to know. It basically describes a girl and a girl who is both feminine and also a little moody and but totally confident in, in just being like a badass. And like I think it comes from, I, well of course like I feel like for photography work in itself like it's always going to come from within right so that's an aesthetic that's an ideal of like the kind of girl that I want to be and yeah. I'm realizing now that I'm translating it in all the work that I do yeah. especially being like a female photographer um, and shooting fashion and shooting these girls like how can I tell their story right and how can I tell my story too I love it <laughs> that really makes it really deep because nor most people think photography is just like you boom take a picture and that's it but you actually infuse so much of yourself in right it. yeah yeah totally yeah. because this work is like I mean as an artist too like it's definitely an extension of myself yeah. right yeah. so so for me I feel like every portrait that I take every photo that I make like it's always going to be in part like partially a self-portrait because yeah. like that's so, so much of myself goes into it that's so beautiful. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. So the aesthetic is like, I mean, I'm just going to talk about color scheme yeah. for a while. It's um, it's very desaturated, and but it's like the colors are poppy, like it's punchy, and it's like pretty bold, but like a lot of the color scheme is just like black and white neutrals, a lot of blue tones, um, and that's just because like like I came from a very feminine aesthetic, but it's it's evolved, of course, you know, and so the colors are more confident right, exactly, in your aesthetic. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like the high contrast is because I've gotten a lot bolder too. Yeah, you know? So that's kind of that. where it comes from. I was gonna ask, like, why do you always put shadows with light and the way you play with yeah. it? What drew you to it first? Well, a lot of it was just like practice, right? Okay. I shot every single day um, when I was with Chriselle. Yeah. And so a lot of it was just like, you do so much of one thing and then you realize like, oh, I really like this one thing. Like for me, because living in LA, it's so sunny and the shadows are already like naturally very harsh. Like um, when I started using that type of light more, I realized that like this is my light. Like I love it. Like it just adds so much more dimension. And especially since like I, I tend to gravitate towards more like things with more dimension and depth to it. Like a, 
which tells better of a story, right? So that kind of light, I think, um, is more dimensional versus like just flat lighting and it shows everything. Like I like leaving a little bit like in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> so there's more mystery. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I like that because I think as an artist, you have to keep doing things and then you figure out what you like and then you hone in, hone in, hone in on your style. Right. Yeah. That's how you create a signature. Yeah, it's like this right? like r this rabbit path of like... Yeah, because everyone starts off kind of like broad. Even exactly. Picasso, he painted everything, but then he like... Yeah, totally. And it's just like yeah. an evolution of like things that you like. And I realized like all these motifs of like flowers, girls, like... Um, like moodiness like that these are elements that I've been working with like for the my entire like photo career but like just it's just more apparent now. Mm -hmm. I'm able to express it a lot better now I love it yeah okay so I noticed that you've been like refreshing your blog and you have a YouTube channel now which is amazing you guys have to check it out so talk about this new direction that you're headed as a photographer I've been shooting and working in the industry for quite a few years now and a lot of people follow me on Snapchat and they're always asking and I share a lot of tips um, on how to edit and how to achieve the lighting that I do on my Snapchat and a lot of people have just been like can you do a blog post can you do a YouTube so it doesn't disappear oh, yeah. after 24 hours yeah. um, and now that I've recently gone freelance I've decided that you know it's time actually really it's been long overdue for me to create a space for like photographers like me who f was first starting out that didn't have like the resources to really learn. It's like I want to create a space where like we c people can go and feel like they're not alone in yeah. terms of like how do I get started as a photographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you talk about like what does a day in your life look like? Now that you're a freelance photographer, you have all this freedom, what goes in that day? Um, or maybe a week. A typical week. Yeah, I was just thinking every day is so different yeah. um, that it's really hard to answer that. Some days I would, uh, I book out my shoots like maybe two weeks in advance. So then on the day of, I meet with the client and I shoot the models or the products or whatever. And then maybe the next day it'll look like I'm editing at a coffee shop the entire day. Yeah. Or the next day I'm meeting with clients and actually talking about like pre planning for the shoot. Or another day, I think last week I ended up um, meeting a client and sourcing like props for our shoot. Yeah, so, which just seems really fun. Mm -hmm. It's like shopping. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we went to this tile store where it had like all these different textures, and I'm like huge on textures. So, like, it was like going to a candy store. <laughs> so, do you yourself, do you collect? props to use for photos like you have your own collection yeah no I am like a hoarder in that sense like I just have I'm like no I can't throw this away I'm, I'm like I need this for something but like I, I collect a lot of dry flowers I have a lot of like text um, textiles and also like textures and um, books and like print and yeah. um, like jewelry and empty bottles of like products yeah. that I just keep like you never know when to like, make everything look pretty. exactly yeah, yeah yeah I think that's what normal people have a hard time with they don't have those random <laughs> accessories and props. yeah they're not a hoarder like props I am. make <laughs> the photo yeah, yeah totally um and also it's just like keeping things that are within your aesthetic too you know so so you seem like you're always inspired can you talk about where you find your inspiration and your motivation to work I think Habitually, I'm just a thinker. I think a lot, so I just find inspiration from like everything that I observe. But uh, sometimes, I mean, sometimes I, I don't feel inspired, you know. And a lot of it also has to do with like then that's why I keep a lot of books around because that way, like, I'm very inspired by words and like imagery. So like words, uh, like I create an image in my head like based off the story that I'm reading or whatever. Um, I just believe in like constantly learning and constantly looking at things so that way like you learn something and then it, it ties it reminds you of something else so yeah, yeah I believe in that too yeah totally you can learn like all these random things exactly. and it adds to your work yeah because inspiration doesn't just have to come from like it, it can't come from only you you know like you have to draw it from everywhere else so you never run out and then what about like self-motivation? Do you, do you motivate yourself or do you have other people in your life that you always look to? Yeah, a lot of it is like I'm super determined to get what I want. I'm super determined like to to not give up, right? But I also, I have a great community of friends around me. I, my parents are super supportive. Um, like I always call my dad to ask or to ask him for advice in career. Or, like he calls me in the morning to like, you know, wish me a good day and stuff and I have like yeah and all my best friends are always checking up on me to make sure like 
you know, I'm handling everything well and stuff and to make sure I'm okay and like everybody like really cares, you yeah. know, and that, that's like, that's everything. How many places have you traveled to in the past year? Um, Maybe past two years. Do you um, count? I think I, I tried to and then I lost track. I know that in May I was in three different cities in the span of like one month. Okay. Um, but definitely the heaviest traveling months for me was last year uh, in September. I think I was gone for like three months entirely just wow. because I was in New York, Paris, Greece, um, Korea. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I have a lot of miles. <laughs> yeah. What is the biggest lesson that you've learned in the past year? Um, always be kind. That was one thing that I learned in Fashion Week and traveling to all these different countries. Like kindness is the universal language. Like it doesn't really matter like who you are. Like if you're not a nice person, you know, how are you going to like connect with another human being? You know, so like I, that's one thing that I like learned and really want to like really try to incorporate into my life like that's why I'm super responsive when people ask me questions on snapchat like how did you get this what filter are you using I'm like I always try to be very helpful you know if it wasn't for the people who are kind to me like in my journey I wouldn't be where I am today you know so it's just like I'm just kind of responding back to the language I love it I think that's beautiful yeah. okay do you know what your dream life looks like I feel like you do you yeah, have totally. a vision. Yeah, obviously. So yeah. can you talk about that? Paint the picture for us. Okay. Uh, dream life would be I'm like in five years or whatever. Like I would be traveling, but I would also be creating work that I'm super proud of. And, you know, I wouldn't be working for anybody like nine to five. Um, like autonomy is super important to me, right? Freedom and like yeah. being able to like wake up on my own schedule. So like, and I love traveling and seeing the world. So like that, those are two things that I like really wanted to to embody as like, you know, my dream life. And so every decision that I've been making, like, like I'm always like, I always keep that in mind. Like, is that bringing me closer to where I want to be? Yeah, I love it. I feel like you're already living that. You travel and now I'm you're freelance. Closer. I'm getting closer. You are. Yeah, because at one point, like when I was traveling, like I was like, this is like totally like where I wanted to be like five years ago, yeah. you know? But now yeah. you want to take control of your own time. That's the only exactly. part, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So it would, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that looks like, right? I feel like you're very close. <laughs> you're good. I'm getting closer. You're yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite quote? Yeah, actually, this is something that has been, that I've carried with me um, ever since when I first started in photography. He was a mentor of my friend, and so I was very close to that friend, and so um, one of the things that mentor said was that uh, in life, it's not about talent. It's about having um, tenacity, and you know, it's just going for it, like, yeah. and so that's something I carried around with me. It's just, it's really not about talent, it's, about, it's more about hard work and having the balls to like go for it. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah. I feel like your journey really is like a flower that's blossoming into this bold, oh badass gosh, chick. Which is like Rosalie flower. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I love it. Thank okay. you. Do you have any last words for any aspiring yeah. artists and photographers? Yeah, I would say just really going for it. Like, don't be scared, right? Like, yeah. I mean, that's been a thing Everyone's that... Everyone's scared. I'm scared. Right. You're scared, exactly. but you have to do it anyway. Exactly. Like, at the end of the day, it's just about just constantly working, constantly being proactive, and you never know, like, what doing one thing will lead you to. So it's just, like, never giving up, never being stagnant. Just keep pushing, like, yourself and yeah. think people around you. Keep moving. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Keep moving. Keep yeah. the memento, momentum going. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of You're like the best. Oh my you gosh. are. Thank you for best. having me. Okay, you guys check out Karen Rosalie on KarenRosalie.com, Instagram, Karen Rosalie, YouTube, Karen Rosalie. All the links I'll put on the screen and in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.